Hello and welcome back. Today we're going to talk about management workstation operating systems and which I use to manage my home lab. Now remember this is for a home environment and not for a work environment. So what works best for me may not work best for you in your situation or in your environment. As we go through this video, keep in mind that I'm not trying to argue which operating system is superior to another, simply which I use to manage my work environment at home. So without any further waiting, let's go ahead and jump right on in. Originally, I was going to unbox the 2018 MacBook Pro for you guys. However, an opportunity arose, well, if you can call it an opportunity, where this original MacBook Pro wasn't working correctly. It was producing vertical and horizontal lines across the screen, which was an indicator of a bad LCD panel. It arrived like that, but it did go away after some time, but then the problem got worse. So I reached out to Apple support. They told me to bring it into the Apple store to get it fixed, and I went there, and turns out they actually don't have the parts to do the fix. The soonest they would have them is September of some time. And on top of that, even if they did have the parts, they wouldn't, able to, they wouldn't be able to repair it because they didn't have a certified genius to do the repair. So a little defeated and a little butt hurt, I ended up getting my world turned around because they did send me home with this brand new 2018 MacBook Pro. This is the same one as this. Uh, so I'll be doing an unboxing now because of Apple sending me home with this, and I hope you guys enjoy it. Let's take a look. Alright, so first things first, let's go ahead and get this thing opened. So again, this is the 2018 MacBook Pro. It is an i7 with 16 gigs of RAM, and also an AMD Radeon 560X, or I'm sorry, that's a Radeon Pro. It has 512 gigabyte PCIe SSD, and of course it runs at 2.6 gigahertz and with six cores. All right, come on, don't be shy. Oh yeah, that beautiful space gray. So unfortunately, I'm probably not gonna do this product justice with my filming, but um, I'm going to do it anyway, or give it a good, Valiant attempt nonetheless. All right. So let's, uh, it's a space gray. It's amazing. I love it. Uh, so not really much in here to see, you know, stickers, warranty information, blah, 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 blah. 87 watts, uh, power adapter and a Thunderbolt cable, Thunderbolt 3 cable. So I already have both of these. These two things alone is about $100 if you were to buy them from Apple, uh, which is pretty insane. I have extras now, so I won't even need these. All right, let's move this out of the way. Okay, let's go ahead and get her opened up for our first boot here. And there we go, off to the races. So I'm not gonna go through the setup with you guys. It's pretty straightforward. If you guys want an in-depth video for this, there's plenty of other YouTubes that will go through this. Um, but for now, we're just gonna go ahead and get this set up so I can go ahead and overview the types of apps I use and the way that I manage my systems. The first native application I use is the terminal, which is used to interface with the Unify router, switch, Unify virtual machine, Unraid, and other Linux VMs via SSH. The Unix-based OS allows for easy scripting and access to tools like TCP dump, rsync, tmux, iperf, and vi. A non-native application I use is Parallels Client. This is to utilize the remote desktop protocol feature to access my Windows Hyper-V server directly or to access any Windows virtual machines individually. Lastly, I use Firefox to access Unraid, web apps like Plex and Nextcloud, web UI accessible virtual machines, Unify management software, Unify video, and also IPMI slash iDRAC UI for the servers or the Upsi themselves. Thankfully, this is for my home lab, so I don't have a domain or have to worry about domain services. So that means I can forego a Windows system entirely. However, if I do decide to stand up a domain and provide domain services on my local network, I will either have to use Bootcamp to dual boot Mac OS and Windows 10, or use Parallels to install a Windows 10 VM on my MacBook Pro. If I did have a domain, I would want a Windows 10 VM or dual boot because I'd want to use RSAT, which is the Remote Server Administration Tools. This allows for easy administration of domain services that you work to provide. 
Another reason why I choose to have a MacBook Pro, or Mac OS in this case, is for Time Machine. And while Time Machine may not have anything to do with management, I like to have it because it's an easy way to create backups. So if I keep all my scripts, notes, diagrams, passwords, URLs, all of that is saved automatically with Time Machine. So I know I'm not going to lose anything. And yes, I could work out on my NAS, but I don't always like to do that. I like to have the speed of the NVMe drive all of the time on demand. And finally, some reasons that have nothing to do with management, and the primary reasons why I chose macOS over all the other operating systems. And the first one being Final Cut Pro, because making YouTube videos is kind of my hobby, it's something I like to do to help present challenges to myself to continue working in a home life environment. It's easy to use and I got it really cheap, so it gives me a great excuse to buy some expensive equipment. Don't tell my wife I said that. Another reason why is because of the ecosystem. I enjoy the Apple ecosystem now that I'm fully ingrained to it. The linkativity between devices is pretty nice. AirDrop, uh, you know, easy backups between devices, password sharing, all of that mess. Love it. Also, what I really like about Mac OS is the stable environment it provides. Between major updates, I never have to worry about losing any data or managing, or maybe not managing, but having to install drivers or clean up after the operating system like I would in Windows with the Windows.old. And probably another major reason why I like Mac OS and one of the biggest selling points for me is the easy way to modify PDFs without any third-party software. Every time I get a PDF, I can sign it, modify it, or do whatever I need to it, save it as a PDF, and send it off as a PDF, obviously, as well. And that feature alone is insane. Now, yes, of course, there are you know other free services that you could use, but I don't have to worry about that. It's all native to the Mac, which I absolutely love. There's a lot of native stuff that I can use on the Mac OS that a lot of other operating systems don't provide, especially Windows. And well, on that note, I guess that concludes this video. I'm genuinely curious to know what you guys use for your workstations at home to manage your home lab. Drop some comments below letting me know. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.